What is up everyone? Fish Shop Matt here as always. Now, just been sat chilling, watching the XL Live Bearer Tank, counting how many babies I've got. I'm up to about six billion. No, it's not too bad actually. There's quite a lot of guppies. There's quite a lot of limia. Um, I've not seen any baby sword tails yet, which is annoying, but hopefully they'll come. Anyway, I'm going on holiday in about a week, week and a bit's time. Um, I just thought I'd come on and tell you. So uh, yeah, I'll see you in a week's time. No, I'm just kidding. Right, so I'm going on holiday in a week's time. And it got me thinking that that is one of the questions that a lot of customers ask in the shop. What do I do when I go on holiday or I go away and see family and I leave my fish tanks for a certain amount of time? Now that did make me think, I'm like, I've got a lot of aquariums in my house now. This is probably the most aquariums I've had since I was probably about 22, 23, 24 maybe. Yeah, somewhere about that age. Um, this is probably the most I've had since then. So yeah, it got me thinking about how many different things and how many different ways there are to keep your fish happy while you're on holiday. I'll try and go through all of the things I can think about in this video as what I would do when I'm going on holiday and all the different tips and tricks. If you think there's any that I've missed, drop them in the comments because I'm always interested. You know, everyone's got all these interesting little things and bits and pieces and stuff like that. So yeah, drop them in the comments if you can think of anything more. The key to going on holiday and having fish tanks or lots of fish tanks is to be organized. Something that I am absolutely awful at. Um, but yeah, you need to be organized. So rather than doing those water changes right before you leave, make sure you're doing them a week in advance at least, because I guarantee you this will be the water change that you break something or you mess something up and you need that spare part and your local fish shop is out of stock, your online shop's gonna take a week to get to you, whatever, whatever. So make sure you are well in advance of going on holiday when you start messing around with water changes. Don't be tempted to do anything out of the ordinary. While you're away, and we'll get into it in a bit, while you're away, you want to do less feeding anyway. So do your normal water change a week in advance, do your normal regime of wiping down the tank and the algae and the feeding, just do everything as normal and that will be absolutely fine. When it comes to water changing, I would probably say a 25% water change a week before you go away will be more than sufficient. That being said, you know, depending on your aquarium, it might be different. Everyone does it slightly different, but if it was me, I'd be dropping down the tank 25%, nice little water change on it. Maybe a little bit of filter maintenance if it needs it, but you know, if your filter's running okay and you've only just recently cleaned it, you might not need to touch it. The more stable your aquarium is when you go away, the easier, better, safer it is gonna be for you. Now, by doing everything advanced, you are just making sure that you've got all your filters have kicked back in, your fish haven't stressed out because of the water change. You know, once you've got fish established in the home aquarium, really the main difference is doing water changes. That's the main time that they get a weird influx of different water or, you know, you might knock back your filter bacteria. So by doing it this much in advance, you can make sure that everything is raring and ready to go by the time you leave. On the run up to going away, you're gonna be wanting to test your water. So when you're testing, again, you can go check out my testing video if you want to. Um, that's an easy way of seeing everything that you need to test for really at any given time. But the main ones are gonna be your ammonias, your nitrites, your nitrates and things like that, just to make sure it's in tip top shape before you leave it for any length of time. Next on the agenda is your lighting. So when it comes to lighting, the majority of times, a lot of the new units have timers built in or Bluetooth integrated into them. I don't think there's many in my house at the moment that aren't running on some sort of app or something like that. So they turn on when I need them to, they turn off when I need them to. As long as we don't have a power cut or anything like that, I'm good to go. Now you could, if you've got a light unit that hasn't got a built-in timer, you could just get like a Wi-Fi plug um, and get a timer set up on that, or even maybe just a uh, analog timer, one of the ones with the dial on them and you click the buttons down. Something like that will keep your lighting on and off when you need it to be. This is more important when you've got a fully planted aquarium because of your plants are gonna need that light while you're away. The good thing with your lighting being on a timer, it actually makes it look like there's someone in your home every evening, you know, my tank, well, my tanks, my house glows in the evening because this one's right inside my front door. This is my front window here. 
Now, a last small bit of advice before moving on to the feeding aspect, which is probably the main thing that most people worry about, but last little tip is this is not the time to be adding new fish. <laughs> it is the most stressful point for fish to be going into the aquarium is when they're being moved. Um, it is, it's just the wrong time. Do not add fish before you go on holiday in any way, shape or form. If something goes wrong with them, you are not there to fix it. If they get an outbreak of something, if they stress out the other fish, if there's bullying, if there's parasites, if there's bacteria, you're not there. Don't do it. Don't add fish in the week or two run up to um, going on holiday or leaving your tank for any period of time. It's just not worth the risk. As I just touched upon, the main thing people worry about is their fish starving to death while they're away. Now, honestly, I don't think I've ever had a customer who have had their fish starved to death. I have had a lot of customers have problems with um, overfeeding by friendly people that uh, come in and look after your tank and you leave them a pot of food and they go, yeah, a little bit more. Yeah, yeah, a little bit more. Yeah, a bit more. And then all of a sudden your tank is polluted. So I've had more customers have issues with overfeeding whilst they're away than underfeeding. As I just touched upon, most fish can last, I say most, the majority of fish can last a, a couple of days, three days, without having any food at all. It's actually sometimes better for their digestive system to be able to process any of that food that's left inside them um, and actually use it up as a nutrient base. Especially if your aquarium is full of plants and woods and rocks and things like that, there's going to be an amount of natural life and fauna and things that they can graze off of and bits and pieces like that. So if you're going away for a couple of days, I probably wouldn't worry too much about feeding them. Um, like this aquarium's quite packed, so if I was going away for a couple of days, I'd probably feed this. But if I had something like a, a little better in a, in a smaller tank, well like upstairs actually, my better tank upstairs, um, or maybe like a shrimp tank, I probably wouldn't feed them for those couple of days because it's just a bit more risky um, than just leaving them to their own devices. If you are set on having someone come in and look after your fish, if they're a fish keeper, super duper. They should roughly know what's going on. If they're not, then I would probably get them in, in advance to show them how the aquarium works and what's going on with it. Couple of things I would show them. I'd show them what the filter looks like when it's running. Make sure they know that there's a ripple on the surface um, or that filter should be making this noise or you know whatever. Make sure they're aware of that because then that means they can walk in and they can automatically go, filter's running, super duper. Make sure they're aware of the indicator light on your heater as well. Because that's one thing, again, those are the two main components that when you're away, if they go wrong, it's done, possibly game over. Whereas if your lighting goes wrong, you can probably get away with it. Your plants might not, but at least your fish will still be there, which are the main concern, let's be honest. If you have a trusted local fish shop to you, make sure your friend, family member is aware of them. Make sure they're aware of where they are, who you trust and who you use for your information and your, um, your stock. We've had it a few times where they've gone to not necessarily non-specialist shops. Um, okay, I suppose the worst one, I'll give you this story. Quick story, story time. Customer went away. His fish unfortunately all passed away through the friend overfeeding them. That friend then went to one of our competitors in the local area to pick up some new fish. Said competitor sold the guy for a tank not much bigger than this, three, that's right, three baby red tail catfish. Now that's fine, red tail catfish at that size, beautiful, lovely. The guy just wanted to do something nice for his friend because he had killed all his fish. He wanted to do something nice, so he bought in three baby red tails, not knowing that these things will grow bigger than this aquarium. And unfortunately, when that guy came back from holiday, he found all his fish gone, but three baby red tail catfish, winner. Luckily, the shop that was selling them took them back, but it's things like that you want to try and avoid. Personally, make your life easier. If you are having a friend or family member look after your tank, put the food in pots, buy, 7, 10, 14, however many days you're going away for, buy some little pots. Put all your food in those pots for the week. So take out your pellets, sprinkle a little bit in, take out your algae wafer, put a little bit in, 
and go through all the different days and mark your pots up. One good thing actually I've seen people use is the little pill dispensers you can get off of the internet and pharmacies and places like that because you can put food in every day of the week and then they know they don't need to feed any more than that. And then hide all the food. Throw it in the cupboard, hide all the food because then they cannot overfeed unless they go way out of their way to go and buy some food, which let's hope they don't. My favourite way to feed when I'm actually away on holiday is an automatic feeder. Now these are relatively inexpensive and quite easy to use. Loads of different brands and loads of different types on the market. Read the reviews, like some of my favourites, the Interpet one, uh, Interpet, yeah, Interpet one's really, really good. The Oase one's really good. Uh, the JBL one's really, really good. I'll try and remember to put some links in the description for you to see them, some of those ones that I trust. But the good majority of automatic feeders are a very simple thing. As long as they're not getting splashed or damp, they'll work absolutely fine. With automatic feeders, I'd always recommend getting them running several weeks in advance. This way you can work out how much food you need to put in, um, how much you want to do, how many times a day you want it to feed, what feeds work in there, what feeds don't. You can have it fine-tuned for when you go on holiday. The amount of times I've been sat in my front room with a plate with an automatic feeder on it, literally running through the cycle so that I know how much food roughly they are getting. And as always, underfeed while you're away. So sorry if the camera's moved. Roma just not, oh, she's coming back again. Right, Roma, would you like to go in your bed? No, just meandering about the house. So yeah, sorry if this has moved or it looks like it's in a different angle because she's just, yeah, nudged everything. But I thought I'd just show you what an automatic feeder is. Some of you may not be quite uh, as aware or maybe not understand what they are. So this is the one that I've just picked up. Um, this one's fairly cheap. This is a, uh, what is this? An Interpet Auto Feeder. So this is probably one of the more simpler versions that you can get. It's got a little timer built in to the front there that you can see. That's not the right time, but still. Um, I hope, yeah, crikey. I'd, I'd have had to leave about, well, several hours ago. <laughs> so you've got a little timer on the front. You set to what the time is. You set when you want your food to drop in. So I would suggest doing it when your lights are on. So team it up with that timer, maybe a few hours after your lights have gone on. Set how much you want to feed via this little dial on the front. So this does minimum and maximum. And all that does is it lets more or less food through this little gap down here. So you set that, set your time, set how many times you want it to feed. And then all that it does, when I press that button there, it'll show you. It rotates round, drops the hatch, drops the food into your aquarium, and goes back around. Very simple, very easy. Um, like I said, I wouldn't get it anywhere near splashes. If you've got air bubbles in your aquarium bubbling up, don't put it anywhere near that because it will get damp. And that is the reason I would always suggest to use something um, granular food, pellet food, like the NT Labs range, the Pro F range. It's all granular and um, pelleted and things like that. So the great thing with that is you can use it all in these and it doesn't absorb moisture anywhere near as much as what flake food would do. Um, and yeah, that's it. This one comes with a foot with a little gap in it, so it just sits on top of your aquarium, drops food in there. This is probably gonna be for the live bear aquarium. I've got one with a clamp on it to go on this aquarium, so it'll clamp to the side. I've got someone dropping in uh, once or twice over the week to check out my bowl and to check out, uh, what else have I got set up at the moment? Oh, the little plant tank upstairs with the endlers in it, the uh, better tank as well. They're gonna come in and check on that midweek and check that these are running as well. So. All the small tanks won't have an auto feeder on them. They will just have a little pinch, probably twice in the week. Whereas these guys will get an automatic feeder on them to uh, make sure they're getting enough food. If an automatic feeder doesn't seem the right option for you, you can get different um, holiday foods. So you'll get like sticks that last for so many days and um, blocks that last for so many days, so on, so on. Um, Personally, I don't use them. The reason I don't use them is because my fish aren't used to that food. It's not saying that they're bad. I just don't think my fish are used to that food. They're not used to the concept of that pellet lump sitting in the bottom. Um, they're used to the pellets that I feed. So why wouldn't I put an automatic feeder on that's got their normal food in it? So you've been away, you've come back, your tank looks normal, your fish are still swimming. What do you do now? To be honest, not a lot normal service shall be resumed. So I would do a water change as soon-ish as you're back. You know, you might be a bit jet lagged, so maybe don't do one if you're still tired, but as soon as you've 
feel up to doing one. I just realised there's an Anubius in a pot. Well, that must have been from the upstairs tank and I obviously didn't use it. I'll have to get rid of that one in a minute. That looks awful. I'm so sorry. You thought I was professional, didn't you? Oh well, not that professional. There's quite a lot of algae in this tank on the glass that you guys hopefully can't see. But anyway, you've been away, you've come back. Like I said, I'll do a little water change, get that back up and running. Maybe a bit of filter maintenance if your filter looks like it's slowed down while you've been away and it's blocked up a little bit. But other than that, oh, if you're using the uh, tablet food, get it out. Remove it because then you can resume feeding their normal food. Other than that, really, I'll be honest, you don't need to do a lot. Once you're back, you're back. Um, normal service of water changes, feeding and everything like that can be resumed. There we are. I hope you found it useful. I hope you found it interesting. Um, like I say, I'm going to try and complete and continue on with these questions because we get these questions a lot in the shop where it will be random things that I think are insignificant and not very interesting. But actually, if I get asked it 10 times in a week, it's probably worth me doing a video because that's me in my little shop getting to ask 10 times a week of how to do something. So I'm sure in the... Uh, great wide world of the internet. I'm sure there's a lot more people asking or Googling the same sort of questions. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna try and continue on with this. If you think you've got any cool questions, any cool subjects that you'd like to see me cover, anything like that, let me know in the comments and I'll try and get round to them. I've got a list as long as my arm on my phone of different videos and content and bits and pieces that I wanna cover. The studio is so close. The studio is so, so close. It's painted, it's decorated just waiting on the delivery of the fish tanks and then you guys can see what I'm going to be doing. Um, not going to fit many fish tanks in there but we're going for quality rather than quantity. Um, I think it's going to be cool. So yeah, um, let me know, like I say, in the comments if you've got any interesting queries, questions. I'm quite happy to make videos about it and uh, I'll see you in the next one. I'm going to go get ready for holiday and do all the things that I've just told you about. Get them done on my aquariums. <laughs>